Hi everybody and welcome back. The Silkworm by Robert Galbraith is the sequel to The Cuckoo's Calling. Wait, 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 don't go away yet, I promise you, this one is actually good. In case you don't know what's going on, The Cuckoo's Calling was this huge bestseller, a detective murder mystery, and I remember at the time I was working at a bookshop and people just bought this book like crazy for themselves, for their friends and family, for presents, and it was absolutely a hit. But then after a while when they actually got to reading this book, they started complaining that it was not very good and the main complaint was that it was boring. And I could totally understand where they came from. Now being boring is a very bad thing to have in a, in a book, but in a murder mystery, in a way, that's even worse. So I do believe that The Cuckoo's Calling got a lot of bad reputation and I, could, I can agree with that. It wasn't very, very good. However, I do, think that, I do think that because of that, a lot of people didn't want to read the sequel, The Silkworm, because they either read The Cuckoo's Calling or tried to and left it in the middle or heard a lot of bad things about it. But I actually read The Silkworm and it was great. It was much, much better than the previous one. And hopefully with this review, we can kind of bring back, or maybe back, it's the second book, but... Uh, I can give it a few thumbs up and a few good points and hopefully the next books will be as good as The Silkworm, if not better. Okay, I'm finished talking about the series as a whole. I'm not going to talk about The Cuckoo's Calling, the first book. It's not the point of this review. This review is about The Silkworm. So, as I mentioned before, this is a detective murder mystery. It has a lot of kind of homages to the to the uh, old detective mystery, to the film noir kind of uh, atmosphere, especially with the protagonist. And I think that was the problem in The Cuckoo's Calling. I think it was supposed to be a more of a detective, uh, good old slow-paced detective book where you don't have a lot of action. It's mainly the detective doing the footwork and talking to people and found finding out, you know, our handkerchief with initials and stuff like that, very Agatha Christie kind of style. And not a book that is filled with action sequence, but it was simply boring. Okay, I said that I'm not going to talk about The Cuckoo's Calling, The Silkworm. So the protagonist of both books and all of the series, whenever it will come out, uh, is Cormoran Strike, and he is very much of uh, film noir, kind of modern film noir. It sets today. Today's London. It's not an historical 50s kind of a, a book. But he is a huge homage to the film noir detective. He drinks, he smokes, he used to be in the war, he has a lot of scars, both, both emotionally and physically. He has a very dangerous job, he has a self-destructive kind of personality, uh, you name it, he has it. Bad romantic relationship, a modern film noir detective. He also has a secretary slash assistant slash sidekick, her name is Robin. And another improvement, in my opinion, from the previous book is the development in her character. She is very beautiful, of course, but she also has a brain behind this, this pretty face, and she helps him a lot. In The Silkworm, Cormoran and Robin are being hired by a woman to track down her missing husband. This husband just happens to be a very famous author who went missing just before he was about to publish a very scandalous book. And this one has it all. The silkworm is just... That's, that's how a murder mystery 
thriller detective book looks like. It has everything. It has a missing person who usually goes missing on purpose and then returns, but this time he actually does went missing. He, we have the worried yet angry wife, we have the overly erotic mistress, we have bitter old ladies, we have bitter young ladies, we have car chases, we have a very mysterious abandoned house, we have closeted homosexuals and we have dead homosexuals, we have people with some sort of mental disability and we have a lot of people without any real mental disability, they are just plain weird. We have a lot of artists who think that they know everything better and they get the world in a different way because they create, you know, very fancy schmancy artistic people. And let's not forget, we have one very bizarre, very disturbing book. And that's all I'm going to say about the actual plot or the characters. I think that one of the Silkworm's best uh, characteristics or best points is the fact that it has so many colorful, plain, weird, bizarre characters. It seems that it's, uh, every single character there is weirder than the other. Each one have their own unique strangeness and I'm kind of a strange person myself, okay? I'm not making fun of weird people or God forbid disabled people mentally or physically, that's not the point. Also, it kind of makes fun a little bit about artists, you know, who are artists. I'm not making fun of those as well, but what can you say? This book is about this industry of, well, of book, the missing person, even author, so obviously he is agent, his publisher, everyone are in this industry which is simply filled with weird characters but in a very good and positive way. I think that, you know, the colorfulness and the weirdness of the characters is what makes the Silkworm so fun and with a very quick pace because definitely, it's definitely not boring. It was definitely a very positive step from the previous book. It's, it's very interesting, it's thrilling, it's very mysterious, it's very old school detective work of actually going, you know, with a flashlight in the darkness, talking to people. The only thing missing was this big um, magnifying glass and, you know, Sherlock Holmes style uh, pipe or something and a trench coat and Detective Colombo. I think that's the only things that were missing from this book. And I really, really love this homage to the classic detective. And I really think it's something that's missing a little bit in the modern thriller detective, more action-filled detective books. However, as I said, this book does have a car chase, it does have its, its action. It's being old school without being boring. It really found out the the good balance between the two and that's absolutely great obviously the book itself is written fantastically uh, at the end the mystery is being solved there are no loose ends which if you've seen the previous review you know that it's something that I hate in mystery books and I'm not alone right everybody hates loose ends in in detective murder mystery kind of book. I keep saying murder mystery, but it's not a murder investigation, it's missing persons case, but you get the point. So yeah, I think that's all I'm gonna say about the Silkworm. Oh, one more thing, just, you know, to be clear in case you were wondering, I did mention it's a sequel, it's a second in a series. You can totally read the Silkworm without uh, reading the previous Cuckoo's Calling. You can read The Silkworm and then read The Cuckoo's Calling if you feel like it, even though I kind of just said it was boring, but feel free. Uh, you do get some basic uh, background information in The Silkworm regarding the characters, how do they relate to each other. Uh, that's not really a very complicated issue. You pretty much get everything from, you know, from the text, they do talk a little bit about the mystery in the previous book, but they don't spoil it, they don't say who the murderer is, that one was a murder investigation, and without a doubt. 
Um, so yeah, you can totally read them in uh, back backwards, the second one first and then the first one. And I am really thrilled to read the sec the sorry the third one once once it will be out. I have no idea when that will be, but the Silkworm was really, really great. If you really like old school style detective mysteries, um, then that's definitely for you. And please don't let the bad reputation that the Cuckoo's Calling got uh, to spoil this for you. So that's it. Uh, did you read The Silkworm? Did you read The Cuckoo's Calling? What do you think? Uh, did you actually manage to finish The Cuckoo's Calling? I know a lot of people stopped in the middle. Uh, write me what you think, write your opinions, don't spoil anything, there aren't any spoilers in here, and I will see you in the next review. Bye!